Hello and welcome to the fresh edition of Science Monitor, your weekly update on what's happening in the field of science, technology and innovation. A new research to prevent the onset of Alzheimer, third edition of Nobel Prize series in India and ceramic membranes for water filters. We will see this and a lot more in today's episode. So let's start with the headlines. Ayushman Bharat fortnight begins, health scheme launched for weaker sections to complete one year. Nobel Prize Series 2019 organized in Punjab, exhibition for the greatest benefit to humankind to remain open for one month. New research on Alzheimer's by scientists of the National Brain Research Centre, special report on World Alzheimer's Day. And CGCRI develops ceramic membranes for water filters, will remove elements like arsenic and iron from water. The Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana, launched by the central government in the year 2018, will complete one year on 23rd of September. The objective of this scheme is to provide health services to the economically weaker sections of the country and to keep them away from diseases. Ayushman Bharat Pakwara or Fortnite began on 15th of September under which various programs are being organized to create awareness among the general public regarding this scheme. Let's see this report to know more. Launched as a game changer initiative to serve the poor, the Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana is completing one year. On this occasion, the fortnight of 15th to 30th September is being marked as the Ayushman Bharat Pakhwara. During this fortnight, various programs are being organized to create awareness among common people about the scheme and also about the prevention and treatment of diseases across the country. Honorable Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan listed the achievements of Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. 135 करोड़ के देश में 55 करोड़ लोगों के लिए ये सुनिश्चित कर देना कि आज के बाद अब उनका आउट ऑफ पॉकेट एक्सपेंडिचर नहीं होगा वो बड़ी से बड़ी बीमारी भी हो जाए तो उस बीमारी के इलाज से वंचित नहीं रहेंगे वो बीमार होने पर गरीब व्यक्ति देश में देश के किसी भी कोने में हो वो देश के हजारों अस्पतालों में से किसी भी अस्पताल में वॉक इन करके और अपना इलाज निशुल्क करा सकता है इस सोच के साथ इस योजना को प्रारंभ किया गया आयुष्मान भारत स्कीम वाज लॉन्च टू प्रोवाइड ऑल हेल्थ रिलेटेड फैसिलिटीज टू इकोनॉमिकली वीकर सेक्शंस ऑफ द सोसाइटी the goal is to provide health benefits to 50 crore citizens by setting up 1.5 lakh health centers by December 2022. Under this scheme, cashless health insurance of 5 lakh per family is being given. Simultaneously, diseases affecting the general public are also being identified. For example, in a test of 1.4 crore people so far, 70 lakh people were found to have hypertension. At the same time, 31 lakh people were suffering from diabetes. Today, I am happy to tell you that 21,000 health and wellness centers, which started the last year, on 14 April, have been created in the whole country. Now, our target is that our target is that this is going to reach 40,000. And as I said, that समयबद्ध तरीके से ये लक्ष्य 31 दिसंबर 2022 तक प्राप्त किया जाए प्राप्त कर लिया जाएगा अंडर द प्रधानमंत्री जन आरोग्य योजना मोर देन 10 प्रो हेल्थ कार्ड्स हैव बीन इशूड अक्रॉस द कंट्री 
18,073 hospitals have been embattled under the scheme, out of which 53% are multi-speciality hospitals. Most importantly, card holders can take advantage of this scheme anywhere in the country. Now, with a year-long experience, measures are being taken to remove the difficulties in the implementation of the scheme. In the second phase of the scheme, many facilities like teleconsultancy services will also be started for the patients living in remote areas. It is expected that Ayushman Bharat scheme will be a strong step towards building a healthy India. Two thousand nineteen marks the third year of Nobel Prize series in India. The series is an exciting initiative to facilitate the interaction between the Nobel laureates and the students to promote creative thinking and innovation, especially in the field of science. The event was organized by the Department of Biotechnology under the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, in collaboration with Nobel Media AB Sweden. This year, the department partnered with the state of Punjab to host the event. The highlight of this year's series was the exhibition titled for the greatest benefit to humankind. Let's see our special report to know more about this prestigious event. The third edition of Nobel Prize series was inaugurated on 11 September at the National Agri-Food Biotechnology Institute in Mohali. Recipient of 2012 Nobel in Physics, Professor Serge Havosh, and recipient of 2014 Nobel Peace Prize, Kailash Satyarthi, were among the distinguished personalities who jointly inaugurated the event. The theme of this year's event was teaching and learning. Many students and teachers from different schools and universities participated in the series. During the run of conferences, lectures and roundtables, Nobel laureates and other eminent personalities enlightened the audience with various topics related to the Nobel Prize. Several hundred nominations each year, and each year we have to go through every individual who's nominated and ask, has this person made a discovery? And then we ask whether or not it is a discovery of a height that either gives us a new paradigm a new way to look at biology, medicine or physiology, or does it shift the dogma and teach us something new? The event also saw the unveiling of a traveling exhibition titled For the Greatest Benefit to Humankind. The exhibition showcases discoveries and achievements that have saved lives, fed humanity, connected people and protected the planet. The exhibition is open to the public till 11th October 2019. This is the new way of technology and science. This is the first time in this country. The event gave teachers and learners a unique opportunity to learn about world changing inventions and the journey associated with them. The Nobel Prize series held lectures at Punjab Agricultural University, Ludhiana, on 12th September and on the next day the event reached its conclusion in Delhi. And it's time for a very short break. Keep watching Science Monitor as we have a lot more in store for you. The committee formed by the Reserve Bank of India to look for the development of the housing finance securitization market submitted its report to Governor Shakti Das. Pooling of similar loans, right? Like once, uh, once we get proper data, this pooling process will be easier. Okay, so that is what uh, that is what is recommended by this report. The committee has suggested a three-pronged strategy. One is the originator, the banks who are who have given loan. Uh, second is the investor who will provide funds, who will buy the um, mortgage-based securities. And third is the facilitator, which is uh, one special purpose vehicle. We need to know that how we are looking at a particular pool which is similar in nature. So homogeneous group can be identified only if we have the right kind of data. And this will help in capturing the data in a standard format, which will make it possible to actually provide the right type of data.
Welcome back after the break. You are watching Science Monitor. It has become necessary to use water filters as the water resources are getting polluted day by day. This problem becomes severe in areas where the water is contaminated with metals as most of the common filters are unable to remove metal impurities from water. The Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute in Kolkata has developed ceramic membranes to solve this problem. Let us see our special report to know more about this life-saving technology. Water pollution remains a serious problem in India. According to an estimate, 50 to 60 percent of the population suffers from waterborne diseases. The problem remains the same in urban as well as rural areas. According to a survey report released this year by the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, nearly 40 million people are drinking water containing metal pollutants in the rural parts of the country. These pollutants could be fluoride, arsenic, nitrate and iron. Over the years, a number of measures have been taken to treat water pollution and one of them is water filtering technology. From homes to public places, water filters are used by people in hope of getting clean water, yet most of the filters are unable to remove metal pollutants. To provide a solution to this problem, the Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute in Kolkata has developed a new type of ceramic membrane. This unit of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, is the country's leading institute in the field of research and development of ceramic membranes. So one thing you can see in our laboratory, we look at uh, contemporary problems. And right now, one of the technologies which you will cover in your visit is the technology for water purification. This is a unique solution we are offering for the country because uh, water is highly polluted here and people are affected by all kinds of diseases. Ceramic membrane developed by CGCRI is prepared from a mixture of alumina and clay that are completely inorganic. These membranes are molded and shaped according to the design of the filter and then installed in the filter structure. This filter is able to segregate metals such as iron and arsenic along with the other pollutants when water passes through these membranes. Microfiltrations are used for particulate matter removal which is available in the water in many parts of India either surface water or ground water. It may contain iron, it may contain arsenic, it may contain fluoride such like it may contain some uh, sand particles, it may contain clay materials, it may contain bacteria. So all this can be removed through ceramic microfiltration membranes. Scientists at CGCRI have designed ceramic membranes keeping in mind the limitations of other membranes. Their absorption capacity is up to eight times higher than the other membranes and this technique also minimizes water wastage. After being filtered, the residual water goes back into the tank and is recycled. Also, there is no need to change them again and again. It is space saving, it is faster, it is durable, means membranes, means it can uh, last 10 to 15 years without replacement of the membranes. By connecting these filters directly to the water source, the contaminated groundwater is being cleaned efficiently. The Department of Science and Technology, Government of India is supporting the use of this technology by providing financial support which is proving to be a boon for the areas where people are compelled to drink water contaminated with iron and arsenic. World Alzheimer Day is observed on 21st of September every year to raise awareness about Alzheimer and dementia. Alzheimer is the most common form of dementia, mostly affecting the older population. Doctors are still looking for a cure for this disease, as many researchers are working across the globe to understand this disease better. Experts at the National Brain Research Centre Manisar have found a very unique connection between an antioxidant and Alzheimer through their research based on brain imaging.
Let us have a look at the report to know how this gives hope to find a treatment for this illness. Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia. It is named after a German psychiatrist, Alois Alzheimer, who first described this condition in one of his patients in 1906. Main symptom of this disease is memory loss that is serious enough to interfere in the daily routine of the patient, thus making the patient dependent on others. A very significant research has been done in India on Alzheimer's by a research team at the National Brain Research Center located in Manisa. Using their sophisticated neuroimaging and spectroscopy techniques, the team has identified a link between the depleted levels of glutathione in the brain and the Alzheimer's disease. The scientists discovered that the antioxidant glutathione exists in two forms, extended and closed. According to the findings, the closed form of glutathione depletes significantly in those parts of the brain that are responsible for memory, planning and decision-making in case of Alzheimer's patients. So, researchers are claiming that monitoring the glutathione levels can offer a way to detect early signs of disease and a therapy can be devised to keep the illness at bay. One of the protective forms of the glutathione, which is called closet for conformation, which is discovered by us, and that can go for a clinical trial. We are, that means what you have to do, that you have to take the glutathione somehow. You have to preserve the glutathione, which is lost due to your different processes. If we are successful, then we can protect our brain from a cognitive depletion. In Alzheimer's disease, some parts of the brain degenerate and this affects the functioning of the brain. As the damage increases, the brain cells stop functioning and die. According to the NBRC scientists, this damage can be prevented by giving non-invasive glutathione therapy and the effects of the therapy can be studied further to find a cure for the Alzheimer's. According to the researchers, their breakthrough work has been accepted by the Human Brain Mapping Journal of USA and can give a new direction to the research in this field. This stress is reduced by the brain nutrition. You can assume this type of nutrition. So, your glutathione will protect it. As much as you are stressed, the glutathione will be stressed by the glutathione. उसको पोस करेगा और बैलेंसिंग रखेगा। लेकिन मान लीजिए आपके ब्रेन में वो ग्लूटाथाइन बहुत कम होने लगे, तो क्या होगा आपका प्रोटेक्शन लेवल कम होता जाएगा, और वो आपकी जो डिसीज़ है या पैथोलॉजी कंडीशन है, वो और बढ़ती जाएगी। People may attribute the initial symptoms of Alzheimer's to old age, so there is definitely a need to spread awareness about this disease. Alertness and awareness are crucial to identify the early signs of the illness through thorough diagnosis and brain mapping techniques are required to know the full extent of the disease. We hope that scientists will find a cure for this disease in the near future. It is time now for a short break, but we will be back in a while. Keep watching Science Monitor. Three million people have now given the thumbs up to Rajya Sabha television. RSTV's growth has been phenomenal with the journey from 2 million to 3 million being completed in less than six months. That's over 6,200 new subscribers every day. Our online viewers are engaging with us more actively. Every day, thousands like, share and comment on our videos. So come and join this growing tribe of RSTV viewers and get ready for an exciting journey. And now let us take a trip down the memory lane through our special segment, History of Science, to see what are the contributions of this week to the field of science. On 24th September 1925, Indian medical scientist Avtar Singh Pantal was born in Burma. He was a brilliant student and received his master's degree in physiology from King George Medical College, Lucknow. 
Pental completed his PhD in medicine from the University of Edinburgh. He made pioneering discoveries in the field of neuroscience and respiratory science. He was the first Indian physiologist to become a fellow of the Royal Society London. His major contribution to the field of science is the development of a single fiber technique for recording afferent impulses from individual sensory receptors. Pental discovered several sensory receptors including atrial B receptors, pulmonary J receptors, ventricular pressure receptors, abdominal stretch receptors and muscle pain receptors. This marked the beginning of a new era in physiological understanding. His discovery helped in identifying the disease in heart and lung patients. Dr. Pental was awarded Padma Vibhushan in 1986. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, that is CSIR, was established by the Government of India on 26 September 1942. Its objective was to promote, guide and coordinate scientific and industrial research in the country. CSIR has grown into the largest network of government research laboratories with 38 laboratories and more than 80 centers in the country. CSIR is internationally recognized in the fields of aerospace engineering, biotechnology, chemical technology, medicine and pharmaceuticals, food technology and petroleum. On 28 September 2003, the Indian Space Research Organization launched the INSAT-3E satellite, which was sent from Guana with the help of the French Space Agency with the Ariane 5 launch vehicle. The satellite was the fourth satellite of the INSAT-3 series, which operated 24 C-band transponders to advance telecommunications and television services. INSAT-3E gave a new dimension to high-speed communication. The satellite continued to operate for the next 11 years and was deactivated in April 2014. And now let us have a look at some of the more developments from the field of science and technology in our segment Science Express. Earth's temperature may rise higher than anticipated. According to a study released by the National Center for Scientific Research, France, the average temperature of the Earth can increase by 6 to 7 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. It is 1 degree higher than the earlier forecast. According to the researchers, sea levels can rise more than 1 meter and storms can be more destructive than before. Resistant mosquitoes will prevent deadly dengue from spreading. Scientists are constantly working to combat mosquito-borne diseases under the World Mosquito Program. In one such step, research is on to develop dengue-resistant mosquitoes. According to the news reports from Vietnam, this year dengue spread like an epidemic in South Asian countries. The new research is expected to solve this problem. CSIR's Central Scientific Equipment Organization, Chandigarh, transferred the technology of Marine Bearing Site for Indian Navy ships and submarines to Messrs. Elcom Integrated Systems, Mumbai. Marine Bearing Site is a mission-critical equipment to meet the strategic needs of the country and an outcome of recent MOU signed between CSIR and Indian Navy. Now. Drones will help in digital mapping of India. Survey of India under the Department of Science and Technology will prepare the digital map of the country in the next two years. This will include geo-mapping of all the houses with an accuracy of up to 10 centimeters. With the creation of this map, postal services will become better and there will be transparency in sectors like real estate. This map will also be very helpful in managing flood and other disasters. Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO, successfully test-fired Astra, an air-to-air -air missile capable of targeting enemy aircraft from 70 kilometres. The missile was launched by Sukhoi-30 MKI fighter aircraft. The missile aimed precisely at the target floating in the air. 
On September 17th, Sri K. S. Sudarshan Memorial Lecture was organized at the National Museum in Delhi on the theme Gandhi and Health. The event was organized in collaboration with Vigyan Bharati, National Museum New Delhi and Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, National Institute of Science, Communication and Information Resources. Professor Balaram Bhargav, Director General of Indian Council of Medical Research, was the keynote speaker at the event. According to the theme of the event, the discussion focused on the ways to overcome life-threatening diseases prevalent in the country today. It was stated that by adopting Indian culture, Vedic knowledge and current science and technology, the problem can be solved and Mahatma Gandhi's life is the best example of this. अब जो नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेस हैं जैसे डायबिटीज है हाइपरटेंशन है स्ट्रोक है कैंसर है हार्ट अटैक है ये अब 60% कंट्रीब्यूशन इससे होता है 40% कंट्रीब्यूशन देश में मलेरिया फाइलेरिया लेप्रोसी से होता है क्लासिक एग्जांपल फॉर हाउ टू प्रिवेंट नॉन कम्युनिकेबल डिजीजेस महात्मा गांधी थ्रू दिस इवेंट पीपल वर आस्क टू अडॉप्ट महात्मा गांधीज रूटीन एंड लाइफस्टाइल That's all for this episode of Science Monitor. Do tell us how you like our program. You can also send your feedback and suggestions on our email. Our email ID is news at the rate vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at Vigyan Prasar, 5th floor, Prithvi Bhavan, Lodhi Road, New Delhi, 110003. We will be back with fresh new stories on science and technology again next week. Till then, stay tuned and think scientifically.